Welcome back, everybody, to the Miami, Ohio Red Hawks Dynasty. Now, our Red Hawks make the three-hour bus ride up to Akron this week to take on the two and four zips. The boys are right, a five-game winning streak coming off a come-from-behind victory over Toledo. And now we turn our focus to a Zips team that is struggling. Only averaging 16 points per game, 125 yards on the ground, and 193 yards through the air. The Akron defense is solid, though. Top 100, really good against the pass. But it's a battle of two Mac East teams, and Akron is looking to pull off the upset. We're going to see the Red Hawks offense on the field first. Gabbert comes out with two tight ends and twins to the right. And we start things off on the ground with Bester. He'll cut it outside, try to get back inside, and picks up four. Here's a player that you need to keep an eye on today for Akron's defense, Bubba Arslinian. The linebacker leads the Zips with 45 tackles and his two pass breakups. He's going to play all over the field today. It's second to six, Gabbard under center, three wide, and is back to the ground with Bester, trying to bounce it outside, but gets ripped down by his face mask. You can't do that. Tack on 15 yards. New set of downs for Miami. Bester gets his third touch of the game, going up the middle, running over a defender, pushing the pile and picking up nine. It's second and short, Gabbard under center, three wide. He'll go play action, roll out to his left, set his feet, and find Sorensen wide open across the middle. He'll spin a field, make a move, and pick up 24. Big game for the Red Hawks. Take another look. Brett gets it out before the rush could get home, and Sorensen makes another big play for this offense. Red Hawks in Zip's territory. They come out in the pistol three wide, and it's back to the ground. This time, the freshman Mosey goes straight up the middle and gets nine more. Coach Thomas making it a point to get this run game going today. Second and inches, Gabbert goes to the gun three wide with Mosey next to him. The freshman tries to go up the middle, but big number 50, Bryce Wilson meets him in the backfield and gets the TFL. That's going to make it third and one. Walker goes to the slot right. Gabbert drops back and checks it down to Homer, and look at the big tight end making moves, and it's first and goal for the Red Hawks. Next play, Jalen Besser takes the handoff, cuts it inside, and walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Red Hawks. Great opening drive for Miami, striking first, 7-0. Time for a game break, and we have an upset down in Florida. The U gets upset by the Tar Heels. Sam Howe with two TD passes on the day. Now we're going to get our first look at the Zips offense, and here's a player to watch, John Zell Norrells. 295 yards and two scores this season. The true freshman leads this pedestrian offense. The Red Hawks defense has to come to play today. It's first and 10. DJ Irons at quarterback in the pistol. Four wide trips to the left, and he's going to the air. He'll swing it out to Norrells. He'll make a move on pace, but get brought down after picking up two yards. Second and eight. Irons in the gun. Four wide with trips left, and Norrells takes the counter out to the right. Cuts it back inside, gets tripped up, and take it down after getting the first strong run from the freshman. New set of downs for the Z new set of downs for the Zips. Four wide for Irons in the gun, and the big QB keeps the option, cutting it back inside. Followed behind his blockers, and he'll pick up 13. Akron's offense off to a good start. Irons back in the gun, and this time he'll hand it off to Norris. He'll bounce it outside. But Ivan Pace makes the play in the backfield. Great job by our linebacker. Second and 11, Irons comes out in the pistol. He's going to the air, throwing into traffic, but Qualls makes the great catch, and that one's for eight. But now it's third and three. Irons back to the gun, empty backfield. The Red Hawks send the blitz, but Iron throws a dot to Matheson across the middle, and the wideout turns up field to pick up 21. First down, Akron. A few plays later, Irons back in the gun, four wide. Matheson comes in motion to the left. He'll take the sweep, but gets smacked in the backfield by Kempson, losing a yard. Red Hawks flying to the ball today. So the loss will make it third and 11. Irons back in the gun, four wide. He'll drop back, scan the field. Tries to roll out to the left, but big Dominique Robinson brings the pressure and gets the sack. Akron forced a punt. Great stand by the Red Hawks defense. Miami's offense back on the field, looking to extend their lead. Bester takes the handoff right, bounces off a defender, but gets stood up and loses a yard. So after the short loss, second and 11. Gabbers under center, drops back, tries to escape out to the left, but the pressure gets home as A.J. Watts on the sack. So that's going to make it third and forever. Gabbard in the gun with trips to the right. Akron sends the blitz, 
Brett looks for Walker up the seam, but the pass gets broken up by a man crew. Fourth down, great play by the safety. So that'll bring on the Miami punt team. And we're kicking from our own end zone. Qualls catches it at midfield, breaks a tackle, catches a block, and is brought down at the 30. That's great field for the Zips. Now Akron looking to capitalize. Iron comes out in the gun, three wide. DJ drops back, has all the time in the world, and threads the needle to Qualls for nine. That's another big catch for the wideout. Second and short, Irons with the hard count. Turns and hands it off to Norris on the draw. He'll find a lane up the middle, pinball, and he'll get three and another Akron first down. A few plays later, Irons back in the gun with three wide. Norris next to him, and he'll take the rock straight up the gut, drive his legs, and get nine. Another first down for Akron. We've got to find a way to stop this run game. But they're taking advantage of the short field. Irons going back to the air, and he gets it out to Mumfield. He'll get tackled after picking up six. And that's going to do it for the first quarter. Red Hawks up seven, but the Zips are driving. Welcome back to the start of the second quarter. Zips looking to punch it in. Irons in the gun three wide. The QB rolls out to the right. Lobs it up to the back of the end zone for Mumfield. He'll make the catch. Touchdown, Akron. Looks like Weatherford got lost on that play. And what a great catch by Mumfield. We're knotted up at seven apiece. Red Hawks offense back on the field. Looking to respond after going three and out on their last drive. Looking to get things going. Gabbert goes to the air, connected with hip and hammer across the middle, and he'll pick up four. Second and six. Gabbert in the gun, four wide. Brett's going to roll out to the left, set his feet, and throws a strike to Walker on the outside. And Skywalker makes a great grab on the sideline for 13. A few plays later, it's third and nine. Red Hawks one of two on third down today. Three wide for Gabbert. He rolls out. To the right, stops and checks it down to Homer. He's got a long way to go, and he won't get there. Fourth down, Miami forced to punt again. This Akron defense came to play today. The offense taking over. Irons in the pistol, four wide, trips right. He'll hand it off to Norris on the delay. Throws a nasty stiff arm, and the freshman back will pick up seven. Second and three, Irons back in the gun, four wide. He'll step up in the pocket, slide to the left, directing traffic. It hits Qualls wide open behind the zone, and he's finally pushed out after picking up 29. Great patience by the junior QB. Zips off to a hot start, looking to take the lead. Norrell takes the handoff, stretches all the way out to the left, but Ben Kempler seals the edge and gets the TFL. So the tackle makes it second and 12. Irons goes four wide in the gun, and it's Norrell's again on the handoff, but great penetration from the interior line and Collier is there to make the play. So that sets up a third and 12, and the crowd is getting into it. Four wide trips right. Irons drops back, lobs it up to the outside, but the ball gets dropped fourth down. Yo, Miami catches a break right there. Red Hawks take over with 420 left to go in the half. Gabbert under center with two tight ends, and it's back to the ground with Bester, but he can't go anywhere, only getting two. This run game, real pedestrian today. It's second and eight. Two tight ends. Homer comes in motion to the left. Bester's going to get the handoff again, stretch it out to the left, breaks a tackle, but gets wrapped up after picking up two more. Red Hawks looking at a third and six. Gabbard in the pistol, three wide. Drops back, looks right, and hits Andrew Homer, but he's going to be short fourth down. This Red Hawks offense is moving in slow motion today. So far, it's been an offensive struggle for both teams. Akron takes back over, and they start off on the ground. Norrell takes the counter, finds a lane on the left, breaks a tackle, and picks up 15. He's up to 39 yards on the day. It's third down. Zips one of three today, and Irons comes out with four wide trips left. He tries to set up the screen for Matheson, but it gets picked off by Jadon Rucker furlow. What a play by the junior corner. He jumped the route. And that sets up the Red Hawks with a short field. Red Hawks looking to capitalize. First and 10. Gabbard in the gun, three wide. Rolls out to his left, looking for Hippenhammer, but overthrows him. That would have been a touchdown. Second and 10. Gabbard in the gun, trips to the right. He'll drop back. And look at this throw to Homer. The big tight end picks up 14 more. Another first down for the Red Hawks. We've got under two minutes left to go in the half. Gabbard goes empty set, five wide. And he connects with Walker, open on the sideline. He'll spin up field for 16. 
first and goal, Red Hawks. Clock ticking here in the first half. Mosey takes the handoff, bounces it outside, makes a move, and gets four. But now Miami looking at a third down. Gabbert goes to the gun. Looks to set up the screen for Bester, but the ball falls incomplete, and it's fourth down. Disappointed way to end the drive. Graham Nicholson comes on for the chip shot field goal. It's up, and it is good. Red Hawks take a 10-7 lead. Miami can't leave points on the field like that. So Akron takes over with under a minute left to go in the half. Irons comes out with three wide. DJ steps up in the pocket, but the pressure gets home. It's Ertle and Butler. They both get the sack. Great pressure from the right side of that defensive line. So that'll make it a second and 17. Irons in the pistol, four wide trips right. He swings it out to Norrells, tries to turn the corner, but gets wrapped up by Ivan Pace, and it's a fumble. Pace rips it out, and Rucker furlough recovers. What a play from the captain. Take another look. Pace gets his hands around the ball, and he rips it out. Great job by the defense. And it looks like Coach Johnson's not playing any game, sending Nicholson out for the 40-yard field goal. It's up, and it is good. And that's going to send us to the half. The Red Hawks on top, 13-7. Been a sluggish start for both offenses, and for Miami of Ohio, this is not normal. They're not able to get the run game going, and Gabbert is missing open throws. But the defense has really stepped up, especially there in the second quarter, generating pressure and forcing two clutch turnovers. If the Red Hawks want to win this game, they've got to find their offense. Taking a look at the stats from the half, and as you can see, it's been an offensive struggle. Only 133 yards of total offense for the Red Hawks, and 116 for the Zips. Let's see if Miami's offense can wake up here in the second half. Welcome back to InfoCision Stadium as we get ready for the kickoff of the second half. Nicholson sends it deep to Matheson, who catches it at the one. The wideout's gonna follow behind his blockers to the left, and that's a lot of running room out there. He'll break it to the sideline, and finally gets brought down after a 52-yard return. Great way to start the half for the Zips. Akron set up with great field, and here comes Irons in the offense. In the gun, four wide, trips to the right. Norrell takes the handoff, cuts it to the left, catches a block downfield, and he'll pick up 17. Akron leading that first down battle, eight to six. Irons back in the gun, three wide. The tight end comes in motion to the right, and it's Norrell's again on the handoff, but what a play by Ertl to make the play in the backfield. It looked like he went untouched. Zips looking at a third and long. They are one of four on the day. Irons back in the gun, four wide. Red Hawks with seven DBs on the field. DJ drops back, and he tries to force a pass, but it gets broken up by Booker. Fourth down. Great stand by Miami's defense. So Akron elects to kick the field goal. This is going to be a long one. The kick is up, but he pushes it left. No good. Zips still trailed by six. He had the leg for it. But the accuracy wasn't there. Red Hawks take over. Gabbard in the gun, three wide. And they start things out on the ground with Besser cutting his side and only picking up two. Jalen only has 20 yards on the day. This offense needs more production. Second and eight trips right. They try to hand it off to Besser, but the Zips defense swarmed to get the TFL. So the loss is going to make it third and 11. Gabbard goes four wide, trips to the right. Brett rolls out to the right. Loads up and looks deep, but the ball gets batted down. Fourth down, Red Hawks forced to make another punt. Akron gets their second possession of the half, and they come out in the full house. Irons with the play action, avoids the rush, and connects with Qualls on the comeback. He'll turn away from the corner, get upfield, and pick up 26. Zips back inside of Red Hawks territory. It's first to 10. Four wide for Irons in the gun. He tries to go hard count. Then hands it off to Norrells. He'll make a move, break it to the outside, and he's off to the races. Norrells takes it to the house. 50 yards, touchdown Akron. The Zips regain the lead, 14-13. Time for a game break, and we've got a dogfight up in East Lansing. Sparty up 26-21 in the fourth over Purdue. So the defense gives up a touchdown, and the Red Hawks offense got to get things going here. First and 10, it's back to the ground with Bester. He'll string it to the outside, cut up field, and pick up six. 
It's second and four. Four wide trips right for Gabbard. He'll drop back, roll out to his right, and fires it to Hippenhammer. He'll take the big hit and get eight. I don't know about you, but things just seem really tough for Miami right now. First and 10, empty backfield, and Gabbard's going to the air. He connects with his big tight end, Homer over the middle. Look at the move from the tight end, shaking the defender, and he gets into accurate territory after picking up 24. Take another look. Gabbard stands tall in the pocket and throws a dart. And great job by the offensive line giving him a clean pocket to throw. Here we go. New set of downs. And it's back to the ground. This time, Mosey tries to bounce it outside and barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. This run game is having such a tough time today. Red Hawks looking at a third and nine. Two of seven on the day. Gabbard's in the gun. Four wide trips right. He feels the pressure. Rolls right, looks for Davis, but the ball gets batted down. Another fourth down for Miami. Well, Coach Johnson elects to keep the offense on the field going five wide. Gabbard drops back, looks across the middle for Sorensen, but the ball gets batted down again. Turnover on downs. The sluggishness continues for Miami. The Zips offense looking to extend their lead. Irons goes three wide, two backs next to him, and he sets up the option. He'll pitch it to Norrells, and the back will get pushed out after picking up five. It's second and five, four wide for Irons in the gun. This time hands it off to Norrells, but the Butler did it. Cameron Butler wraps him up and brings him down for a four-yard loss. Big play for the junior. Another third and long for Akron. They are one of five on the day. Four wide for Irons, and he sets up the screen for Norrells. But Cam Butler chases him down against the TFL. The DN came from the other side of the field to make the play. Now it's time for the Red Hawks offense to wake up. They take the field. Gabbard comes out three wide. He sets up the screen for Mosey. He'll make a couple of moves and pick up nine. But it's another third down for the Red Hawks. Two of eight on the day. Gabbard in the gun trips right. Brett drops back. Rolls out to the right and finds Homer open downfield, and the big tight end does it again. Big play and the first. The Red Hawks back inside the red zone, and Gabbard goes trips to the right. He'll drop back, checks it down to Bester on the outside. He'll make a couple of moves, catch a block, cuts it back inside and gets 13. First and goal, Red Hawks. So after an incompletion, Red Hawks come out four wide. Gabbard will drop back. Fires it to Sorensen, and oh my God, what a catch in the end zone. Touchdown, Red Hawks. Take another look. The senior wide receiver goes airborne to make this insane catch. Miami of Ohio back up on top. Red Hawks set up to go for two to make it a seven-point game. Gabbard drops back, tries to hit hip and hammer in the end zone, but the ball will fall incomplete. Two-point conversion, no good. Time for another game break, and we've got a stunner in East Lansing. Purdue pulls off the upset, 32-29. Plummer threw for four touchdowns in the win. But here in Akron, this game has gone back and forth. Just take a look at how close these stats are. We've got a minute and two seconds left to go in the third. Akron takes over. Irons and the Zips come out in the four wide. Mumfield comes in motion. And he'll take the sweep, but Cam Butler and Ivan Pace are all over it. Way to seal the edge, fellas. Akron's looking at a third and 13. Irons comes out, trips left. And they set up the screen for Norris. He'll shed a tackle and another, but get pushed out short of the sticks. Fourth down, Akron forced to punt again. And what a difference a half makes. The Red Hawks have just as many yards in the second half as they did in the first half. We got 11 seconds left to go in the third. Red Hawks looking to extend their lead. Besser will take the handoff, make a move in the hole, and almost broke it. He gets tripped up after picking up 17. But it's time to put those fours up, Red Hawks fans. We're going into the fourth quarter. Miami of Ohio leads Akron by five. Start of the fourth, Gabbert comes out with two tight ends, twins to the left. And we're going back to the ground with Bester. He'll stretch it out to the right, tries to spin but loses a yard. We've got to do a better job blocking that edge. Second and 11, Gabbert with the deep drop, avoids the rush, and hits Sorensen on the sideline. The senior will pick up 15. What a throw and catch. So after an incompletion, Red Hawks come out in 12 personnel. The give goes to Bester straight up the middle, and the back will only get three. 
Another third down for Miami. Four wide trips right. Gabbard drops back and hits Sorensen, but he cuts his route just short of the sticks, making it a fourth down. But Coach Johnson keeping that offense on the field. Gabbard in the gun. He'll drop back and decide to tuck it and run, and the sophomore slides down after getting the first. Red Hawks back inside the red zone. Gabbard under center, three wide. And the handoff goes to Bester. He gets shifty, and he'll pick up four. Second and six. This time, Mosey's in the backfield. He'll take the handoff, follows behind his blockers to the right, and get brought down just short of the sticks. Third and inches. Gabbard in the empty set, five wide. Mosey comes in motion. He'll take the handoff, plant his foot, cuts the field, gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Red Hawks. Great play designed by Miami, and we go up two scores. And that would do it. Each team would add a late touchdown, but the Red Hawks hold on to win, 33 to 21. This game was a true test for our Red Hawks. I feel like they couldn't get anything going in the first half, but the defense came alive in the second quarter, getting us key stops uh, on a very determined, accurate offense. But offensively, I feel like this run game has to be better if the Red Hawks want to win the MAC. So let's take a look at the stats on the day. Brett Gabbert finishes with 235 yards through the air, one touchdown, completing 56% of his balls. On the ground, Besser finished with 83 yards and two scores. Mosey had 25 yards and a touchdown, but both finished with under four yards per carry. Out wide, Andrew Homer at tight end had a day. Seven grabs for 119 yards. Sorensen finishes with four catches for 53 and a touchdown. Walker had two for 29. Hippenhammer only two catches for 12 yards today. Besser had one for 13 and Mosey had one for nine. Defensively, solid game all around. Pace led the way with eight tackles, five TFLs and a sack, plus a forced fumble. Miller, Boswell, and Booker each had four tackles. Simpson and Butler chipped in with three each. Our defense was flying in the backfield, making plays all day. 14 tackles for loss on the day, and we had four sacks on irons, not to mention a pick and a fumble. Just another great win as we stay undefeated. So let's take a look around the country. A lot of upsets this week. We'll start things off. UNC taking care of business versus the U, 42-27. The Tar Heels scored 21 in the first quarter and 14 in the fourth to close the Canes out. The down in Knoxville, the Gamecocks shocked the SEC by beating the Vols by six. It looks like there was only three touchdowns scored all game. But probably one of the biggest upsets of the day, Purdue beating Michigan State at home, knocking Sparty down to number 16 in the latest polls. Also, what's going on in Columbus? The Buckeyes lose to Rutgers by 11. And finally, my, how the mighty have fallen. The Razorbacks go into Tuscaloosa and beat Bama 28 to 24. Seems like a lot of the nation's best took a loss this week, but our Red Hawks stay undefeated. But that could change all this week. But that all could change this week when we lock up with our rivals, the Ohio Bobcats and the Battle of the Bricks. This will be Coach Johnson's first rivalry game. Let's see if he can get his team ready for this big game.